Today we are blessed. Today we are blessed. And I want you to be ready to hear what God has for you. Because the word for you has been carried by a servant of the Lord all the way from South Africa, Apostle Simon Kariuki. And I pray that you will receive him from wherever you are. And as you receive him, your miracle accompanies that word that today will be the best, the start of the best of the rest of your life in Jesus' name. Let's welcome Apostle Simon Kariuki to share the word of God with us today. exalted above all other names the name of Jesus Christ who has risen from the dead blessed be his holy name Amen. in Jesus mighty name we have worshipped and let somebody shout Amen I would want to take this opportunity before bringing forth the word of the Lord to appreciate the bishop, Dr. Jimmy uh, Kemani, for inviting me to bring forth the word of the Lord this morning. I salute you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity on this Resurrection Sunday to bring forth the word of the living God. I cannot forget I, the many years of friendship the many years of preaching on this altar, you are celebrated and appreciated. And thank you very much for loving on me and for believing in my ministry. The Lord richly bless you together with your wife and children. And I would also want to appreciate Bishop Mark Karaoke, who introduced us in 2005. He was the basis of me coming. And thank you for keeping the relationship alive of our plus two 15 years plus I have been a part and parcel of the journey of this ministry and uh, I would want to bring forth the word of the Lord this morning and uh, the word of the Lord this morning will be based from the scriptures in uh, Luke chapter 24 I will be preaching from Luke chapter 24 and if you are there I can go ahead and read as I tell you the topic. I'll be reading Luke chapter 24 from, from verse 1 to verse 12. The Bible says now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth. And they said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and they remembered his words, and they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest, it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and other women with them who told these things to the apostles. And their words seemed to be like idle tales, and they did not believe them. But Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen clothes lying by themselves. And he departed, marveling to himself at what had happened. I want to speak about the third dimensions 
of the Passover season. And if you find this to be a complicated uh, topic, the third dimensions of the Passover season. And if you find this difficult, you can just talk about resurrection. Resurrection. I'll be talking about resurrection. What is resurrection? It is coming back to life. It is coming back to life. The third dimensions of the Passover season. And I want to wish all of you watching a happy Passover season, a happy Resurrection Sunday. And I'm believing that as I bring forth the word of God, that something supernatural will happen in your life. Because this is a season of wonders. It is a season of miracles. It is a season like no other. And God can choose to use this day to visit you in a dynamic way like he has never visited you before. And I am declaring and prophesying over your life a change of season. Even as the resurrection of Jesus brought a change of season... I want to prophesy and declare a change of season in your life on this day in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The story we have read is very interesting because it talks of how these women, particularly Mary and even uh, the other one, the two Marys and Joanna went to the tomb. Yeah, they had gone there to take spices and they had gone there to just possibly prepare the body of Jesus Christ. And when they went, they found that the tomb was empty, that the stone had been rolled away. You will remember that uh, just before this day, there was a day that Jesus was on the cross, you know, on the cross. Then on the second day, he was in the tomb. But on the third day, the stone was rolled away. Three symbols that are important. The cross, the tomb, and I'm also going to speak about the stone being rolled away. You know, the cross was a symbol of shame. It was a symbol of disgrace. For many years, you would not want to wear the cross as we wear today. Today, when you go all over the world, people have crosses on their rings. They have crosses on their necks. They have crosses all over. Even here where I'm preaching, there is a cross that is right behind me. A cross was not something that would have been proud of. But when the blood of Jesus spilled on that cross, the stigma of the cross was removed. And I'm declaring that the blood of Jesus will remove every stigma in your life. That the symbol of shame will become a symbol of fame. I am declaring the symbol of disgrace will become a symbol of grace. Ah, that on this, as we celebrate this season, that there will be a turn around. That even as the cross became a central, a central symbol in the Christian faith, that on this day, that the cross of Jesus will work on your behalf. I declare that diseases will be healed. I declare that shame will be removed. I declare that the taking away of sicknesses, because by the stripes of Jesus, we were made holy. I have come to prophesy here from this altar that this is a season of transfiguration. This is a season of transformation. When Jesus died on the cross, he died on our behalf. And the Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. He died so that our sins may be forgiven. Our burdens may be taken. That our shame is taken away. That our reproach is taken away so when Jesus died on the cross that was something significant because it was the beginning of the journey it was the beginning of an important journey but the Bible tells us that after he died he was taken to the tomb and when he was taken there they locked him in there and, and they put a huge stone because Jesus had, Jesus had prophesied that he would, be, he would die, that on the third day he would rise again. 
And so the people who, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the ones who were instrumental in the crucifixion of Jesus, had decided to put a big seal uh, on, the, on the tomb. And I think the second day is usually the tricky one. When Jesus was on the tomb, that is the day that we don't talk much about because we don't know what happened in the tomb. But it's a necessary day. A second day, the day of crucifixion, we are clear that Jesus died, his spirit, his blood, they put a crown of thorns. But on the second day is a silent day. It is a day that we preachers don't preach much about because there's a lot of mystery. What happened? But Apostle Peter explains, he tells us in the book of Peter that when Jesus died, he went on an evangelistic crusade. I think he went to hell to witness to those who are in Noah's time who had not heard the gospel. Oh, Jesus was busy on the second day. And a second day of silence of Jesus being locked in the tomb. Yes, he was dead, but his spirit and his soul must have acquired maybe a different body. And he went off to do that. But now the Bible tells us that on the third day when these women went, what happened is that Jesus Christ had risen from the dead. What happened? The resurrection power that rose Jesus from the dead. He had prophesied that he would die. But on the third day, he would rise again. Now, the, one of the important doctrines of the Christian faith is the doctrine of resurrection. We must believe that there is life after death. Resurrection. Life after death. Because the issue of resurrection is the issue of coming back to life. And I'm believing that those of you that are watching, that you will believe that even when you die, that you too will resurrect with Jesus. You will resurrect with him. In fact, it is very, very important for the believer to be a person who believes in resurrection. We need not to have Sadducees. You know, the Sadducees, they never believed in resurrection. You know, one of the professors in Bible college said that Sadducees, they are sad, you see. He was explaining to us about Sadducees, that they are sad, you see. And he was telling us about the Pharisees. The Pharisees, you see, they are far, you see. He was making fun. How the Sadducees are sad, you see. Because a person who does not believe in the resurrection, uh, you know, is a person who needs to be very sad. Because Apostle Paul explains to us and he says that even our preaching is futile. Our preaching is useless if there is no resurrection of the dead. So we believe, those of us who are who are Christians, that you know that when we die, we are, it's just a moment that we are sleeping, that it's just a matter of time before we rise again. And the same power that rose Jesus from the dead will also rise us up from the dead. By the way, the reason we get baptized, you know, in water is to identify with Christ in his crucifixion and in his burial and in his resurrection that is why before you are baptized with much water and i believe this is a day if i was if it was one there was no corona i would have requested we look for a big tub here and i baptize some of you uh, you know I, today is a day i would like to baptize people with much water because before you are baptized when you you have to confess and repent and say you never get baptized without saying whether you are born again. What are you saying when you are getting baptized? Before we put you in water, you confess and you say that my name is Simon and I have been washed with the blood of Jesus Christ. In other words, you are identifying yourself with the crucifixion of Jesus. And now when you identify yourself with the crucifixion of Jesus, the next thing we do is we bury you in water. You see? And then after that, when we have put you deep into the water, we resurrect you. In fact, pastors practice the issue of resurrection all the time. Every moment we baptize, we baptize people. We are identifying with the crucifixion, with the burial, and with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So if you have not been baptized, I believe that the season for you 
to be put in much water. That that season has come. You must identify with his crucifixion, with his burial, and with his resurrection. But you know, normally because when I'm baptizing, because I was in Meru and I baptized people on River Meru, one of the rivers in Meru, and a lot of these guys don't know how to swim, I usually assure them that I will hold them very nicely. I tell them, listen, as I baptize you, just close your nose, uh, but my hand with the other person, the other pastor or usher, we are going to make sure that as we take you down there, we are holding you. We will dip you deep in there, but we'll make sure we bring you back. We shall not leave you down there. We shall bring you back. Now, so we take you down and we bury you, but we make sure we bring you up. And this is what happens when we die. We are taken there by the mighty hand of the Lord. He takes us down there, but his hand is still behind us. One of these days, he will lift us up from the grave and we shall rise again so we shall proclaim oh death where is your sting so even in death we are victorious although it's worrisome because just like a person who doesn't know how to swim worries when we put them in water what if i drown it's when we are we are we are we die we get worried what if we die and never rise up. I have come to tell you that baptism is symbolic not only of crucifixion, burial, but it is also symbolic of resurrection. So for you to be baptized, what are you simply saying? You are simply saying that I believe that, <coughs> that even as Jesus was crucified and he was buried and he resurrected, that I too, I will resurrect one day I will resurrect. So we need not to worry when some things happen in our lives. In our lives, there are seasons. There are seasons of crucifixion. There are seasons of burial. And there are seasons of resurrection. There is a time in your life you go through persecution. You go through trials and tribulations. There are times when you are like buried. Nobody even recognizes that you are around. Even if you try and lift up your hand, I'm here. It's like you are invisible. But there is a time when it comes, when you resurrect. And I'm believing this morning that this is a morning for you to the resurrect. To resurrect from obscurity to prominence. I have come as a prophet of God to declare that you are rising again. I've come to proclaim Isaiah 60 that arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. I have come to declare to those who are locked in somewhere where they feel that the stone is too big. I have come to declare that the stone is about to be rolled away. Your stone is about to be rolled away. Your stone is about to be rolled away. You are about to come out from a tomb situation. You are about to come out from a situation that has been difficult. This is your morning. This is the resurrection Sunday. And the same power that rose Jesus from the dead is the same power that I'm believing God for that it will come upon your life. The same resurrection power. The same resurrection power. Paul says in Philippians chapter 3 verse 20, he says that I may know him, that I may know who? Christ and the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his suffering. That I may attain to his, to his resurrection. Beloved. Paul's desire was to identify with Christ. In all the dimensions. Not only in his resurrection. He I wanted to identify with him. On his crucifixion. On his burial. And on his resurrection. Ah, beloved. I want to pray for you that God is going to give you the ability to understand that it's not just about uh, crucifixion and suffering. Uh, there is a moment that will come in our lives that we are going to be in a place of glory. So hallelujah. 
So the story ends well because we not only talk about the torture of Jesus during crucifixion, we not only talk about the tomb where the Jesus was locked up, but the story of resurrection is a story of triumph. So it's not torture, tomb, it ends well. And I have come to declare victory upon your life. Yes, you have been going through things. Yes, Corona has taken our loved ones. Yes, there have been difficulties in our lives. But I have come to prophesy that your story will end up with triumph. You will end up victoriously. Because victory belongs to Jesus. You shall end up victoriously. I have come to declare that victory is your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That it is not just about uh, the torture and the tomb. It's also about the triumph of Christ. Some years ago, I was reading the whole story of the crucifixion of Jesus. And how when Jesus was being crucified, there was darkness during the day. Uh, there was darkness during the day and, 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 and an earthquake and the curtain tore into two. And those years when I was reading, the Lord asked me, do you know why there was darkness during the day? So I said, Lord, I don't understand why there was darkness during the day. Why was there darkness? And the Lord said to me that the moon is appointed for change of seasons. There had to be uh, darkness so that the moon appears to indicate the change of season for humanity. So even though Jesus was crucified uh, and uh, there was still light, darkness had to come so that the moon appears. And the moon was indicating a change of season. And I believe that this, as we are celebrating this Easter Sunday, this Resurrection Sunday, this Passover Sunday, that I believe that God is going to turn some of the darkness you have been going through into light. This is a season for change of season. Some of you will enter into a portal of blessings that you have not entered before because it is a day for change of season. So the, the, the darkness that came when Jesus was being crucified was because the season of humanity was changing. And the Lord asked me, do you know why there was an earthquake? I said, I don't know. The Lord said to me, it's because I was leveling that old temple. I, was, I wanted to build a new temple. Do you know that during the crucifixion of Jesus and his burial and his resurrection, there was a construction that was going on. That on the day he was crucified, God was putting up the courtyard of the heavenly tabernacle. You know the tabernacles changed at the cross. During the crucifixion, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ, there was a farewell party to the old tabernacle. If you want to call it the mosaic tabernacle, there was a farewell party. But there was also the inauguration or housewarming of a new tabernacle. So when Jesus was being crucified, he, was, he put up the heavenly courtyard. When he was buried on the second day, he was putting up the heavenly holy of holies. When he resurrected, he was putting up the holy of holies. So during this season of the crucifixion, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, a lot was happening. It was not just our salvation that was purchased. There was also a construction of the heavenly tabernacle. And hence the reason why the curtain cut into two. Hence the reason why there was an earthquake. Because it was a leveling of ground when Jesus was being crucified. So that he puts up a holy place, a tabernacle that can be accessed from anywhere in the world. Yeah, so on that particular day when Jesus Christ was being crucified priesthood kissed kinship it was a day when the, the two of them married hence the reason the bible says that we are now kings and priests because on that day 
the two officers came together. That's why they removed his garments. Because the garments he was wearing were representing priesthood. But what he was to put thereafter represented kinship and priesthood. Because Jesus is not only our high priest, but he is also the king of kings. And he is the Lord of lords. And he has gone ahead of us so that we too can be kings and priests in his, in his army. So this time is a time of change of priesthood. It's a time when we enter into a different priesthood. We are in the order of Melchizedek. The priesthood according to the order of Melchizedek. And the Melchizedek was both a king and a priest. So it is a season when your things can change. And I want to declare a change of season in your life. That you will be clothed anew. That the curtain will be cut. You will have access with God like never before. You will enter into places you have never entered before. That God is going to give you wisdom like never before. That foundations that were funny will be leveled by the heavenly earthquake. And that a new building will be put up in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. And that the devil will be under our feet. This is a season of victory. The devil was defeated at the cross. He was defeated. He was put to shame. He thought that he would win. But on the cross, Jesus took back that which Adam lost. Adam lost dominion. So this is a season of gaining dominion. May you receive the dominion that Christ had. Receive dominion. Receive power. In order to walk in victory. During this time, it is a time of regaining our dominion. It is a time of Aaron's rod arising. You know, the story of the Bible is a story of trees. It's a story of trees. It starts with a green tree bringing death. We ate, the first Adam ate from a green tree. And he brought death. Are you listening? He ate from a green tree and brought death. This the Bible is a is 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 a book of trees. It's a it's a book of many things. I love the scriptures. I love the Bible. You know. So, but we start with a green tree bringing death, and we end up with a dry tree giving life. Oh my goodness! The opposite. That Jesus Christ died on, the, on a dry tree and he brought life. And the first Adam ate of a green tree and brought death. My friends, not every green tree you should eat. You know the people talk of green pastures. Be careful. Not every green tree will bring you life. You can eat from a green tree and die like the first Adam. He ate from a green tree and received death. But the last Adam died on a dry tree and gave life. You remember the story of how the three items in the Holy of Holies, one of them is Aaron's road. I want to speak about the pot of manna quickly, Ten Commandments and Aaron's road because as I speak about the resurrection Sunday, I, I want to bring forth the word of the Lord to you. You know, these three items appear in the Ark of the Covenant. In the in the Holy of Holies. Why are these three appearing? The pot of manna. Aaron's uh, ten commandments. And Aaron's road. Pot of manna. Ten commandments and Aaron's road. I want to focus particularly. On Aaron's road. Why do they appear. In the ark of the covenant. In the scriptures. Pot of manna Exodus 16. Ten commandments Exodus chapter 20. Aaron's road, you see it in number 17. Why are these important components? What does a pot of manna symbolize before I come to Aaron's road? Because I'm interested with Aaron's road because of this is resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. I am, the pot of manna symbolizes supernatural provision. That God can provide without our help. God fed the children of Israel with some cakes that had honey. They were like wavers. Beautiful cakes. 
uh, just to prove a point to them that he is a God of the supernatural. This is a season of the supernatural. And God can provide supernaturally if he chooses to. Uh, the same power that rose him from the dead can also provide manna. It can provide, you know. So that pot of manna is there as a memorial to remind us of supernatural provision. And I want to declare those who are going through lack, particularly because of economic recession and COVID-19, I want to pray that God will send help out of Zion. I have come to prophesy supernatural provision. I have come to speak Philippians 4.19 that my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah! I feel like preaching. Hallelujah! I do get excited. The pot of manna should always remind us that God can provide. Then Ten Commandments were written by the finger of God. To remind us of spiritual laws. That we live in the world, but we need to be governed by laws. Even though now we are not under the Ten Commandments. Okay, we are, but the laws are being written in our hearts. It's important for you to receive supernatural spiritual laws to govern your life. Let's talk of Aaron's road. Twelve sticks in the house. These guys, the 12 sons of Jacob, were debating who is the greatest. You know the 12 sons of Jacob, you find them in the book of Genesis 49. So they had a power struggle. Like we'll be having a power struggle in 2022 in Kenya. It's called power struggles. They happen. Even these young men were struggling with who is the greatest. Who is the greatest? This is in the book of Numbers chapter 17. So they had this debate, who is the greatest? And, and God went, and Moses went to God to ask him, what do I do with this situation of these 12 sons of Jacob? They are arguing uh, who is the greatest, you know? And you know, God said to Moses, ask them to bring sticks, roads, 12 of them, and let them have a kesha or a vigil, an overnight in the house of God. Sounds crazy. You know, just 12 sticks in the, in the house of God, in the, in the tabernacle. What, what's going to happen? So these 12 sticks, you know, they had an overnight. And I would, you know, if it was me, I would have assumed if you leave a stick here, you'll find it the same way. But in the morning, there was one stick that stood out, one road that stood out. In the morning, Moses looked at it. He said, what exactly happened here? You know, this stick is not connected to the soil. And yet, it has started to bear almonds. It has started to bear almonds, fruit. And yet, it's not connected to the soil. You know, a strange phenomenon. And that, street, that stick was Levi Street. The, the stick belonging to the, the priesthood. And God was simply saying that the priesthood, even though they look like they are useless, and they look disconnected to the everything, they shall always bear fruit. I want to prophesy to somebody here who is looking like they are not connected to the ground, they are not connected, that soon you shall begin to bear fruit. You shall bear almonds. You shall bear fruit. God has been taking you to through a dry season. People have been wondering, will this person ever survive? Because there is heat in their lives. But I've come to prophesy that overnight your situation can change. You can become green even though you are a dry tree. And that is what happened to Jesus. When they looked him at him, the man from Galilee, he never looked like much. But on the third day, he started to bear almonds. He started to become green. The resurrection has got to do with Aaron's road coming to life. Aaron's road coming to life. He rose from the dead. A road that looked like nothing from Nazareth 
Can anything good come from Nazareth? Yes! Aaron's rod can bear fruit. You know, sometimes God takes you through seasons. He takes you through, instead of taking you to the road of prosperity, he takes you to the wilderness to dry you up. And you are wondering, am I ever going to make it? You are dreaming for greatness, that side. But the road you are going is that way. And you are seeming like, oh, you are getting farther and farther and farther and farther from what you thought. Because the, the, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our, our thoughts. Our God does not work the way man works. And I have come to declare to you, who has come to a hopeless situation, almost thinking that God has forsaken you, that he will never leave you, nor forsake you, that you are about to arise, you are about to arise, you are about to shine. Glory be to his holy name. Are you listening to this story? Aaron's road is symbolic of resurrection. Eh? It's symbolic of resurrection. And you remember how Jeremiah was asked, what do you see in the book of Jeremiah? I think it's Jeremiah 1. He was being asked by God what he sees as I speak about resurrection. Because I'm believing that somebody is about to resurrect. You are about to resurrect my brother, my sister. You are about to come back to life. Some of you have been dead even spiritually. You are about to come to life. Some of you have been dead financially. You are about to come to life. There are marriages that died a long time ago. They have been in the tomb. I have come to prophesy life to those marriages. They are about to come to life. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1, from verse 11 to 12. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. I see, then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. You mean Jeremiah was prophetic. Jeremiah saw the branch of an almond tree. The same story he saw. You know what I, I think he saw? I think Jeremiah saw the cross of Jesus before it happened. I believe Jeremiah saw the branch of an almond tree. But because how can it be that in the book of Numbers, this, this stick bears almonds. Then now Jeremiah, in Jeremiah 1, 11 to 12, when he sees, he sees the branch of an almond tree. What was Jeremiah seeing? He was seeing Jesus dying on the cross and rising again. And God answered, you have seen well, for I am, I am, I am waiting to perform my word. I am I am ready to perform my word. May every word that God has spoken in your life come to pass. May every, let this season be a portal of open heavens. I declare open heavens upon your life. I declare that your eyes will see. I declare supernatural breakthroughs even upon your life right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I declare that this season you shall hear a voice saying, this is the way walking it. It will be a season of divine direction. It will be a season of breakthroughs even upon your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. This, I've told you, if there was, it was one of those days, would have done communion. Today, in fact, I was tempted to ask for it. But I'll ask you to do it. And I'll tell you why you need to do it. Today, I would have done baptism. 
I would have baptized people so that they identify with his resurrection. And if you don't believe, I then say, Kama wamini resurrection, takuacha kwa maji. Wale wamini ni waache kwa maji kwa sababu ni masadusi. Lakini kuna wale ni nabatiza ni kuyapeleka chini na walete haraka. Ndiyo wasikaya hapo chitana. Lakini leo pia ningefanya communion. Because when the disciples, when Jesus had died, and they were walking to Emmaus, and Jesus joined them on the journey to Emmaus, if you read further from the scripture we read in Luke chapter 24, you will see how these disciples were going all the way to a mouse. And they were joined by a man. And they didn't recognize that man until they ate the bread and the wine. When you eat the bread and the wine, your eyes can open. And I'm praying for those who are watching that you will have personal communion so that your eyes open so that you see Christ in his glory you see Christ in his power you see a solution to your problem communion is never just done like that they walked a long journey and they were not recognizing Jesus they are with him but they don't know him how can people who had spent time with Jesus for a long time not recognize him until he sat down with them and he gave them the bread and he gave them the wine and their eyes opened and they said you mean we have been walking with Jesus all along we never recognized him oh my goodness may the eyes of your understanding be enlightened in the mighty name of Jesus Christ May this season not just be a season of talking about resurrection and you cannot see him in your glory, in his glory. May your eyes be open. May you feel him. May he touch you. May he visit you in a supernatural way. I have come to declare that your eyes will be open. Communion is very important because it identi we are identifying with Christ in that very, very special way. Uh, and praying that our eyes are open. So I want to declare upon your life, those of you that are watching from the home, that, that God and those who are watching even from here, that God, during this season, he will deposit his power upon you. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead that same power will be at work in you. I have come to prophesy that why are you looking for the living among the dead? The Christ we serve, he is not in the grave anymore. He is seated at the right hand of God the Father interceding for us. All the other gods when they died, they are still in the tomb. But ours has risen from the dead. He has risen and is still at work and he can perform miracles. And the same power that rose him from the dead, it can also solve your problem. It can solve your problem. So I've come to declare upon your life a mighty breakthrough. That everything that is dead in your life, it shall come back to life. Receive the life of Christ in Jesus' mighty name. I have come to declare that access will be given to you. That the curtains that are hindering you to come to the deep places of God, that they shall be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. I have come to commission you to your new assignment. This is a season when you should receive an assignment to go and declare the works of God to the rest of the world. Jesus breathed on them. May God breathe on you this season. May he remove doubts and fears in your life. Because Thomas doubted. He said, I will not believe that he has risen from the dead until I put my hand, my hand on, his, on where they pierced him and on the sides. And Jesus appeared to Thomas. He said, blessed are those who believe without seeing. I want to declare to you that you will believe that resurrection is for real. Let me just pray for you quickly. Everlasting Father, I just want to pray for your people right now. 
that on this resurrection Sunday, they will receive the visitation of God. They will receive the visitation of God. That the same power that rose Jesus from the dead will be at work in them. And Lord, if there's somebody who doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that they will surrender their hearts to you fully. Those that are not baptized will also call the house and they be baptized. I pray that the eyes of many will be open. That Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, there will be a change of season. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen.